welcome to the final session of the day. Um, look, uh, today I want to uh, lead you through the process of awakening a giant and um, I hope I'll be able to, uh, to achieve that successfully. I'd just like to alert you to the disclaimer, uh, particularly the forward-looking statements. I do make forward-looking statements in the presentation and if I wasn't, then I wouldn't be doing my job. Um, in terms of the capital structure, uh, given the number of shares on issue, still uh, quite surprisingly quite tightly held, uh, with somewhere north of 54% uh, of the register um, representing the top 20 shareholders. Institutional investment uh, somewhere north of 15 now, probably closer to 20, uh, and the directors well incentivised with about 12%. Uh, current cash or cash at the end of March, uh, 1.7 million, and a market cap uh, today of uh, somewhere around 13. Uh, million. Look, uh, Jerry, in the introduction, Jerry mentioned that we're West African focused. Uh, that's somewhat historic now, uh, as um, just recently we're in the process of, of, or commenced the process of divesting the last of our West African properties. Uh, so today I want to focus on the Sandstone Gold Project in Western Australia, and uh, in particular, um, just uh, take you through our slumbering giant, which is the Two Mile Hill Tunnel Light Deeps deposit. Um, I'll touch on the processing plant and infrastructure and uh, also elaborate a little on the exploration potential and importantly, why you should be invested in Middle Island resources. In terms of the location, uh, we're 11 kilometres south of the township of Sandstone uh, in the goldfields of Western Australia, about 400 kilometres northwest of Kalgoorlie. Uh, we're located on the sealed highway between Mount Magnet to the west and Leinster to the east. And the core of the project comprises a 100% interest in two fully permitted mining leases that predate native title. Uh, we also have uh, options to acquire a 100% interest in the Wirraminna uh, property in purple there and also the Dandaraga property down here and have recently acquired for the princely sum of $500 uh, the NEDS project um, up there as well. Um, <clears throat> with the project also comes with an operating licence, permitted tailored storage facility and bore field. So what does a, uh, a, a slumbering giant look like? In this case, it comprises a tonal-like, or let's call it a granite for the moment, uh, plug or stock uh, that its surface measures about 250 metres in length. It's about 90 metres wide and it extends to at least 700 metres and remains open below that. It's ubiquitously quartz veined uh, with sub-horizontal sheeted veining and the gold is associated almost exclusively with that veining and the tonalite is pervasively carbonate, sericite, pyrite altered. Um, it com comprises an expiration target of 24 to 34 million tonnes. Um, at, at present from, that goes from 140 metres, which is the base of the open pit, quantified resources for the open pit, uh, down to a depth of 700 metres, and uh, that represents some 900,000 to 1.5 million ounces. So it's a pretty big system, uh, particularly for the goldfields and this part of the goldfields in particular. Um, generated very consistent diamond core intersections, the most recent being 500 metres of 1.4 and 100 metres of 2. Um, and what we've identified is that 99.6% of the gold is hosted within the quartz veins, within that tonalite. Uh, it comprises coarse free gold, uh, commonly associated with galena uh, within the quartz, quartz veins, but nevertheless, metallurgically, it's extremely benign, in fact, absolutely excellent. Uh, bond ball mill work in indices uh, in the order of 16.4, uh, kilowatt hours, so that's a moderate rating, uh, really by virtue of the fact that uh, of the sericite carbonate alteration. Um, and uh, were it a straight unaltered granite, it would be considerably north of that. Uh, about 60% of the gold is recoverable via gravity concentration, and we're getting gold leach recovery, recoveries of 93 to 97% after gravity concentration and at a grind size of, of 106 to 125 microns. So excellent leach kinetics. Uh, we're getting greater than 90% recoveries in the first two hours. Uh, very low reagent consumptions and no deleterious elements associated with that. 
The uh, initial mineralogical test work that identified that the gold uh, is associated with the quartz vein led us to the possibility of ore sorting as a mechanism for upgrading the, the uh, mineralisation and certainly the test work that's been undertaken to date indicates that a combination of XRT and colour sensors provide us with the best result. Uh, the first pass indicative trials that we undertook uh, gave us a, a approximately recoveries um, in excess of 96% of the gold reporting to 30 to 40% of the mass and resulting in a significant increase in mill feed grade and a commensurate reduction in mill throughput. I think ore sorting is a great example of how new technology or in this case upgraded technology can change the economics of uh, uh, projects, marginal projects. So. Um, Importantly, this now brings this deposit, which we'd parked up as a separate uh, project that was probably too large for our balance sheet, it now brings it in compatibility with the existing process plant capacity. Um, so that's a, a, a really key finding. So in effect, our two projects have merged as one. Uh, we've got more definitive ore sorting trials in progress as we speak, uh, out at Castle Hill, in fact. And this includes iterations around crush size and grade range, um, which will be important. So this will give us a much better idea about what sort of upgrade we can achieve and if we can achieve the similar sorts of results to the indicative uh, trials and perhaps even better, uh, then we'll be in business. The, um, I'll just in incidentally, that, those two photos there, uh, the one on the left over here, shows the accepts and the weight of that from the sample is eight kilograms. And this weight, the weight of this rejects is, is 50 kilograms. So it gives you a sort of an idea of what you can achieve. Uh, with the, that's just with the colour sorting uh, without the XRT. So a very good positive outcome there. <coughs> Our ore sorting is certainly the key to the project economics. There's no question about that. In terms of mining, uh, our preferred method uh, that we're looking at at the moment is the potential for sublevel caving, i.e. essentially taking the lot. If uh, ore sorting is not quite enough to achieve that objective, we've certainly got the option to go uh, to other methods and we've got very broad intervals of, of uh, higher grade material in there that we could potentially look at open stoping. Uh, so still um, uh, bulk uh, mining. Uh, but uh, just a different style, somewhat more selective, a little more expensive. Um, so that uh, core tray there gives you a very good idea of the sort of vein densities and widths and so on uh, within the tonalite. Um, but, <coughs> excuse me, but the giant also has arms and legs uh, because there's high grade gold hosted within BIF units, banded iron formation units immediately adjacent to the tonalite. So where the in tonalite intrudes the banded iron here and here, so the banded iron shown in blue. Um, the gold's associated with pyrite replacement of magnetite horizons, so selectively replaces those magnetite horizons where intruded by the tonalite. And, you know, we've got uh, two width, uh, true width intercepts there, the best of which is 22 metres of 24 grams, 8 metres of 56, 5 metres of 27. So certainly very high grade, but somewhat isolated pods, so in the overall scheme of things, relatively immaterial, but certainly uh, very nice sweetness to that deposit. And we've identified multiple ore positions. We've only drilled out the one completely. Identified multiple ore positions around the margins of the tonalite in the upper two banded iron formations that we've drilled. Uh, we've also interpreted a further uh, iron formation at about 400 metres depth, which remains undrilled at this stage. Uh, we have, in addition to the ore sorting studies, we have drilling uh, proceeding uh, to drill out the top uh, half of that um, uh, exploration target from 140 metres depth down to 420 metres depth, uh, initially to an inferred status and then ultimately to an indicated status. And then, uh, interestingly enough, though, it's the lower half that's probably the higher grade based on the limited drilling information at depth. Uh, but um, nevertheless, uh, we need to start at the top and make that one work first. Uh, we're also doing iterations around uh, un underground um, uh, studies, uh, both incorporating the BIF uh, unit, the one that's quantified is shown here in yellow, uh, stacked 
uh, zones uh, there in yellow, uh, very high grade. Um, should we look at sublevel caving, then this scenario is unlikely. This white shows the open pit uh, that we're planning to develop first. Uh, that's the decline off that pit. Uh, that's shown to be developed in the tonal light. Realistically, for geotechnical purposes, we would need to move that out of the tonal light if we're going to cave it. So we'd put it out down in here somewhere uh, so that we can mine the tonal light itself that way. So we would look at decline access via either the Two Mile Hill pit as shown here or alternatively the adjacent Shillington pit. Um, so uh, we're very confident that that BIF ore position in isolation can be mined economically um, and uh, we're, we're equally confident that the uh, tonal light uh, will be able to mine that as well. So the initial uh, development also provides for cost-effective drilling platform, certainly for the other BIF positions, which at depth are expensive to drill and relatively small targets, and also for uh, infilling the tonalite hosted uh, mineralisation as well. Just moving now to the processing plant. Um, it's a 600,000 tonne per annum CIP plant, very typical goldfields plant. Um, it includes conventional grinding, milling and, and leach circuits. Uh, it's been on care and maintenance since 2010 uh, and GR Engineering have estimated refurbishment costs of 10.3 million, including owner's costs. Um, so, and that will include, or, or we will incorporate, a purpose-designed crushing circuit which is capable of treating all ore types. Historically, this plant has treated dominantly uh, oxide ore types, uh, but certainly there's no limitation in the grinding circuit uh, to treating harder ore types, it's really about the upfront crushing uh, to achieve that end. Um, as I mentioned, the project is fully permitted with an operating licence and it's the only processing plant within 160 kilometres. Infrastructure, uh, look, uh, it comes with a lot of kit. Uh, we've got a contract diesel generated power plant in very good working order. Uh, we've got fuel tanks, workshops, laboratory and mine offices substantial inventory of equipment and spares uh, and a fully equipped camp accommodating 100 people on freehold title in Sandstone Township and a well-maintained airport to service uh, the FIFO operations. The exploration potential is also quite substantial, particularly given it's a relatively small block uh, that we've got. Uh, first and foremost, I guess, the potential for extensions and repetitions of the Two Mile Hill Tonalite style of mineralisation uh, this is a gravity image uh, shown here, uh, quite detailed, 25 by 50 metre gravity image, showing the two-mile hill tone light, the footprint at surface, uh, superimposed on this dark blue area, which demonstrates a gravity low. And we have other gravity lows uh, developed uh, elsewhere to, toward, to the north and, and northeast uh, of the two-mile hill de deposit. And a tone light... Uh, is a tonal light doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be mineralised, but certainly it gives us the opportunity to identify uh, additional um, deposits of this style and we'll certainly be progressing that uh, as funding permits uh, as far as the exploration goes. Beyond that, we've got priority targets identified at Davis, McIntyre, Shillington West, Turley, Cowan, McLaren and Agnes and a further 30 untested weights of evidence targets uh, elsewhere. Um, the, uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat and um, uh, another, I guess, string to our bow is uh, consolidations. Uh, we've already consolidated the Wirraminna and Dandaraga projects via options and acquired the NED project and we have a tribute agreement in place uh, with a prospector uh, who's chasing nuggets. He's found 245,000 ounces, uh, sorry, 245 ounces in gold to date. Uh, including uh, the, the largest uh, nugget being a, a 13 ounce nugget uh, here uh, of which we get a share and uh, some of them are in uh, uh, Gary's display case out, out in the uh, display booth area. Um, and certainly, importantly for us, five new targets have been identified and more are anticipated to be identified. So um, we're also undertaking reviews of proximal third-party deposits within the district and uh, I'd just like to uh, now tell you why you should be invested in Middle Island Resources. It's 100% owned, fully permitted, with a processing plant 
It provides near-term gold production uh, requiring modest capital, hosts an initial open pit mineral resource of 127,000 ounces, um, and then we've got the Two Mile Hill Tonalite Deeps deposit to come to follow it. Considerable additional uh, exploration upside. It's the only plant for 160 kilometres and one of the very few emerging development developers in a more buoyant, buoyant uh, Australian gold market. And I guess I'd like to conclude uh, by just asking, how many companies do you know that have 100% interest in circa 1.5 million ounces um, with a fully compatible, fully permitted processing plant with a market cap of 13 million? I look forward to welcoming you onto the Middle Island Register and assist in awakening our giant, and I'm more than happy to uh, provide additional detail at booth number 48. Thank you very much.